Hey folks, everything new under the sun. Uh, as we continue on in the last days, things are going to get really uncomfortable for the faithful, for believers who uh, stand for truth. Uh, we will be persecuted. And the Bible says we should expect to see persecution in our days. We will be persecuted. We will not see the wrath of God, but we will be persecuted by our friends, by our enemies, by the government, by ultimately by Satan, who is the um, unseen guiding hand of all these things as he seeks to destroy all goods, God's people and all God's creation. So I'm going to be bringing you some information um, just to get your mind ready and your heart ready so that you can get your soul in order and uh, your life in order and recognize um, that this place, this is not our home. We have a heavenly home with our Heavenly Father, and we will be in eternity um, in not too distant uh, future. But right now, I think we really need to get ready uh, for some real persecution. It is starting to happen. I think we're getting close to that seven-year period, and um, the introduction of the Antichrist, which I believe will be uh, brought into power, the people of the earth will demand that he be brought into power to save them. They will demand a savior to save them from World War III, economic collapse, and famine. And with that comes the great persecution, the great hatred of anybody uh, who goes against the Antichrist and who, um, you know, preaches the word of God. And uh, we all use code words on YouTube now. So there's significant censorship happening uh, about all the major issues, even the war in Ukraine. You can't say stuff anymore. This is unprecedented. This has not happened, uh, you know, in the history of social media, uh, where all this stuff is, you, you really you really do get banned, you get censored, uh, you get uh, demoted, your, your videos get uh, sent down, the algorithm uh, spits you out and doesn't share it. Um, I, I try to share the John Campbell videos about uh, COVID on Facebook. And what does Facebook do? Uh, it fact checks it and it demotes it. It does not share it with the people I, you know, told Facebook to share it with, i.e. my friends and family. Uh, we're being censored. The truth and information is being withheld from us. It's an incredible situation. Let's take a look at some of the things happening in the world. Again, this is not a uh, um, uh, happy days sort of thing. Um, you need to uh, be sober and straight-minded about what is coming, what is occurring, and get your heart ready because you don't want to be one of those who fall away from the faith because the pressure is too hard. This is where you need to uh, uh, get strong in the Lord, um, strengthen your faith, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for all your needs because we will one day lose our jobs, lose our houses, lose our ability to uh, put food on the table, uh, lose our ability to participate in the economy, the governments of the world will take this away from us. Let's take a look at this. Uh, this, uh, I guess, is uh, interesting um, as it relates to the third temple. Farmer revised biblical balm of Gilead and temple incense. Now, this is interesting because, of course, the, the third temple is one of those things, uh, one of those major milestones that's going to happen in the last days, probably brought in the first half of the seven-year period, and the Antichrist probably allows it to re be rebuilt, the third temple. And the Temple Institute, for example, has all the implements, has trained all the, the uh, Levitical priests. Um, and they have all the things they need, uh, save a few items, uh, the, the ashes of the red heifer to purify the implements, and um, um, I, I guess this temple incense as well, which they also need. So now they have the temple incense in this balm of Gilead. So another indicator that we are close. They have absolutely everything save one or two critical pieces um, to start sacrifices again. And so that means we're getting very, very close to uh, the, the sacrifices in the third temple. And we know that there were sacrifices because when the Antichrist comes to power, at some point he will cause the sacrifices to cease and then sit on the throne in the third temple as God. So that's where that's coming from. So in terms of the persecution and censorship, which I was speaking of, this is um, a Tory counselor, and he was arrested for a hate crime after sharing a video. He retweeted a video criticizing 
the police uh, about the arrest of a Christian street preacher. So uh, first of all, a Christian street preacher was arrested, so you can't preach on the street. You can't uh, tell people the truth anymore. You're arrested for that. But also, if you simply repost videos about these things, you will also uh, be arrested and be sent to jail. Uh, folks, if you are believers, if you are faithful, you will be sent to jail. A conservative counselor was arrested for an alleged hate crime. So in the in the Britain, this is a common thing. It's a hate crime. Uh, and, you know, if you, uh, you know, half of, uh, at, at some point, all the things uh, spoken of in the Bible are going to be considered hate crimes. And if you speak them, if you dare to speak uh, uh, or even read the verses of the Bible, you will be um, accused of a hate crime. And uh, this guy has a hate crime because he retweeted a video criticizing uh, the police um, and how they treated a Christian preacher. This is this is just one guy. A police officer snatched, um, this is a street preacher, uh, snatched Mr. Ilsalmi's Bible after the preacher was accused of being Islamophobic. Uh, so you can't speak against uh, Islam, uh, for as an example. Um, he did get awarded $2,500 pounds for uh, 2500 pounds for a wrongful arrest uh, but this uh, conservative counselor shared the video uh, regardless about it and um, and he got arrested for hate speech hate crimes um, and eventually will be will be getting in trouble for um, thought crimes um, Lawwell 31 who is uh, uh, this is another guy who is the only black counselor in uh, Northampton Northampton Hampton Shire was suspended by his local conservative group in July after he responded to images of pride parades organized by LGBT groups, uh, writing, When did pride become a thing to celebrate? Because of pride, Satan fell as an archangel. Pride is not a virtue, but a sin. Those who have uh, pride should repent of their sins and return to Jesus Christ. He can save you. Now, likely, the transcript of this YouTube video will be collected. Uh, likely, I will get some notice on this and, uh, you know, Potentially, I could get a, a, a strike on my account uh, for reporting uh, what somebody else said in this article. Uh, and, you know, you know whether this is the truth or not, it doesn't matter. Um, the government's coming after you. So it's going to be a hard time to be a believer, to, be, to ha continue your faith in Jesus Christ. It's going to be all sorts of pressure, and we have no idea how much pressure there will be um, to not go along with this stuff. We're going to have to give up. Everything in our life, in, and possibly uh, many of us will have to give up our entire lives, i.e. going to jail like this person, uh, and we may have to give up our life. We may be put to death for the cause of Christ. That has happened throughout the, the history of the church. So honestly, folks, you need to be uh, prepared for that, and it's something us Westerners can't really comprehend. That's not a happy thing. That's not a shock and awe, you know, uh, get all the views sorts of video uh, description of what's coming because what people want to hear is that we're going to be raptured out before any bad times come upon us. Folks, I don't think that's the case. I am ready to go if that's the case. If there is a pre-tribulation rapture, I'm ready to go. But I think we're here for a lot of stuff. Uh, Russia puts its longest range nuclear capable missile on combat duty, nicknamed Satan 2. Russia on Friday announced that Sarmat ICBMs are on combat duty. Now, I've described in the past uh, that the Antichrist will come prior to the seven-year period, and he will come at a time when we're on the brink of uh, global annihilation, a complete and total World War III. I suggest to you that what happens is some nuclear weapons uh, are detonated in somehow, some fashion, uh, that will be catastrophic to the world economy, to uh, the, the global powers, especially the sovereign governments, to where all the citizens of the world are calling for peace and security. Peace, peace. That's what they'll be crying for. They'll be crying out for a savior. And the Antichrist will step into the light, into the limelight, and say, I am he. I am your savior. I can save you from World War III, economic collapse, and famine. And folks, I, I really think this is the trigger of the, the seven-year period, and this is what convinces people to accept a world government. They give up, they give up all their national sovereignties uh, uh, for, and their sovereign, uh, you know, dollars and uh, pounds, whatever they may be, 
to go along with this Antichrist figure, the one world leader, and to accept this world economic system and this new currency. Who would do that if it were uh, anything other than complete worldwide collapse and World War III and the whole world is uh, devastated and all the supply chains are destroyed and we have no food and we have no economy? I think it gets that bad, uh, folks. And that's not even the wrath of God. That's just um, the stupidity of man and the sin in the world causing that. So, yeah, is this, uh, you know, is this Satan missile part of that? I don't know, but it's pretty interesting that it is now on combat duty. They have their nuclear weapons ready to go. There are significant drone strikes all around Moscow, throughout Russia. Uh, they're trying to poke the bear in the eye. They're trying to provoke Putin to a response because Ukraine knows that if they can get Putin to respond... Uh, in such a manner with a nuclear weapon that that will be a red line for NATO. NATO will join and then we are in all out World War Three. So they are doing everything they can uh, because they can't win the war in Ukraine. They can't get the Donbass back. They're not going to get Crimea back. They tried their counteroffensive. It failed multiple times. The best strategy here is to goad uh, and to uh, yank NATO into the battle. And how are they going to do that? By forcing Putin to make a misstep um, to get impatient, to get frustrated and with all the drone attacks and to drop a nuclear uh, device. So this is credi incredible, folks. This is ZeroHedge.com. Um, nuclear capable uh, Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile system was previously touted by Putin as being capable of hitting any target on Earth and is widely believed to, uh, to be by far the longest range missile in Russia's arsenal. By the way, where is the United States in anti bio prophecy? They're not named by name. Could it be that they are taken out uh, with a couple nuclear weapons? And uh, while the United States and Canada might not be completely destroyed, there will be people there. Um, they would be devastated to where they would not be a, a world power. They will not be able to support Israel in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And they are destroyed economically. They can't come to the aid of Israel when Russia marches, Russia and allied countries march on Israel. And is that because they've been taken out of the way? Could very well be, folks. And honestly, if that was the case, um, I could say that that might be in some ways a bit, I don't want to say blessing maybe, uh, but that might actually make it easier if we are less of uh, a target in the last days uh, in front of the Antichrist because our countries are uh, effectively destroyed and we're just surviving at that point. It's an interesting conversation to think about that. Um, you know, would that ultimately be a better situation for us if we were destroyed and then, uh, you know, we weren't in the uh, uh, a target for the Antichrist and the world government at that point? We would, again, we would just be surviving where we are. I don't know. Uh, you can let me know in the comments there. I think this is a, a good uh, commentary on where we are. Wild mobs of young people, totally out of control. Now it speaks to um, the future uh, of civilization and the people, the young people specifically, who are around these days, who spend their uh, days uh, in social media, on their cell phones, etc. If the young people are the uh, future of this country, we are in big trouble. We are supposed to be a civilized society, but now we're facing an entire generation of young Americans that is completely out of control. Violent crime is surging all over the nation. Theft will cost U.S. retailers more than $100 billion this year alone. And at this time, at this moment, we are dealing with the worst drug uh, crisis in the entire history. Needless to say, all of these problems is primarily being fueled by Americans under the age of 30. These are people who have uh, no faith. Uh, it says, these young people have been raised in a society that has largely rejected traditional values, where the family has been destroyed by the governments, where schooling has been destroyed, where prayer was taken out of school, and the singing of the national anthem was taken out of school. And we are reaping the consequences of this as we have a godless, um, um, you know, uh, civilian population um, that will grow up to be the politicians and will be the voting folks and move these countries further away from God because they didn't have God growing up. This is this is our cause, folks. This is the cause of the parents not bringing up their uh, children uh, wisely and not uh, being in the word with them. And I've got responsibility in that as well. Um, and I know it definitely. 
Uh, War News 247, emergency media in Kiev fighting on the outskirts of uh, Kupyansk. 68 more settlements in northeast Kharkiv and being evacuated. Russia's have, uh, Russia has, emfort, has entered uh, Petropavlovka. Uh, suffice it to say, things are bad in Ukraine. Uh, they are not winning. All the news coming out of Ukraine is bad news. A massive attack on Kiev, biggest since spring. You know, it goes on. You can go to War News 247. And uh, a lot of information there. But uh, is it rap- Russian propaganda? Maybe. Um, but if uh, there was good Ukrainian propaganda, that would be all over CNN and CBC. If they were uh, making advances on the battlefield, that would be the top headline. The fact that it's quiet in mainstream media, that not, not a lot is going on. They're not touting the success of uh, the counteroffensive number one, uh, nor counteroffensive number two, or whatever counteroffensive they're on now, means that Ukraine is not winning. And uh, Ukraine is uh, moving to drone strikes, again, with the idea of um, moving, uh, getting Putin to uh, make a decision to escalate things um, just by wearing him down and, and, and basically killing Russian citizens uh, to where they uh, get NATO involved to invoke you know, Article 4, Article 5 of the NATO Constitution um, to uh, go to war against Russia. And <clears throat> would the U.S. like this? Probably. Uh, because, again, they're making money. Look at where the money is going. Look at who is making money. United States is selling lots of natural gas to Europe. United States is uh, selling lots of munitions to Ukraine. And uh, Ukraine owes them a lot of money. And so uh, there's a lot of people making a lot of money off this stuff, folks. Uh, when all else fails, if the economy is collapsing and the job numbers are uh, going down and inflation is going up, uh, what do you do? You distract people with war. And that has been what has happened throughout history. And that's what we see right now. Watch the news. Are they, is, is all sorts of propaganda? Are they pushing you? Are they distracting you with something? What is it they're distracting you with? Look back in history and say, what did the governments use to distract folks in the past? This, um, this is an interesting story here. Canadian MP says, uh, unvaxxed, who died after being denied an organ transplant, deserved her fate. This is naturalnews.com. You can read it, um, but effectively, um, and the uh, Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms in Canada uh, was arguing on her behalf, uh, but basically uh, she didn't uh, get vaccinated. Um, She was on a list for organ transplant. She got kicked off it because she wasn't following public health protocols. Uh, She has now died because she didn't get that transplant. And what do people say who support the you-know-what? Uh, they say she deserved it. She got what she, uh, you know, what what she had coming to her because she didn't follow public health guidelines, and this disgusting lack of uh, uh, love uh, for life and uh, a recognition of uh, the importance of life and respecting that, uh, this incredible lack of uh, that uh, sympathy there is incredible and it's coming from the same people who are bringing you medically assisted uh dying and euthanasia uh, and all these things at the end of the day who is controlling this it's satan he is trying to kill as many people as possible he is using hundreds and thousands of different ways to do it uh and he is moving people in a direction the those who are faithless who don't have a faith in jesus christ he is moving them all uh, to support causes that ultimately kill uh, as many humans as possible uh, through, you know, bumping people off transplant lists uh, to uh, medically, uh, you know, uh, encouraging people to commit suicide for any sort of thing uh, to getting people on uh, drugs and destroying their lives that way and, uh, you know, all the way to abortion. So this is what we would expect if Satan is gaining power in the world, and he is. If the faithful are decreasing in number, and they are, we would expect this influence to grow, uh, you know, on, coming from the left right now and coming from uh, the godless. This is just the end result of a godless society. And, uh, and it says in the word of God, you know, when the Lord returns, will he find any faithful? And I think the answer to that, kind of a rhetorical question is, well, he's not going to find a lot faithful because the world has turned. Our youth are not following um, in in the faith. Uh, they don't recognize Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They want earthly heroes. They want earthly saviors. And that's exactly what the Antichrist is when he comes into power um, at the beginning of the seven-year period. 
he is the Savior. He touts himself to be Savior, and ultimately he sits on the throne in the Third Temple, declaring himself to be God. And that's at the midpoint of the seven-year tribulation. That is the abomination of desolation. That is God's red line. When the sun and the moon go dark, and then the wrath of God falls, and he fixes stuff. But before that is all that persecution, all that um, hatred on the Christians and the faithful that's going to come down from your brothers, your sisters, your family, your neighbors. Uh, you're going to be hated. You're going to be a bigot. You will be put in jail uh, for the things that you say, the things that you believe in, the things that you're doing. You will not be able to participate in society. Persecution, folks. Bible says we are all um, going to be persecuted in our lives. We are all destined for persecution during our lives, and we should get used to it, and we should um, recognize that and stay strong in the faith. I'll leave there, guys. Not a happy episode at all, um, but I think you need to start getting sober and serious about these things. Thanks for watching. Well, I'll leave there and we'll see you in the next video.